Hey everyone. Just a quick video to show something about how a flyback transformer works in the flyback topology. I uh, have my scope running here. Top trace is 5 volts per division, um, 5 microseconds uh, per division, and it is the signal out of basically the uh, TL494 uh, gate drive chip. Bottom trace is 50 volts per division and it is uh, what the gate of the MOSFET, single MOSFET, uh, driving this flyback transformer is seeing. And I'll zoom in a little bit for you there. There's some ringing on the top trace, but it's nothing too bad. It does dip below um, full saturation voltage, but it, it doesn't really matter. This MOSFET's running cool and it's not complaining. Um, you can see a little undershoot on the bottom, but again, it's just from you know sloppy uh, thermal together kind of thing. Nothing to worry about. Basically, a, a decent waveform, nonetheless. The bottom trace, you can see this large um, half-wave sinusoidal hump, which is 90 volts peak. And just past it, in time with the top trace, is a small uh, 13 volt, or around there. Uh, peak. And that peak with some ringing after it is exactly what you see on the top trace. You're just seeing it reflected back in a different section. So the out of phase large sinusoidal uh, hump there, which occurs after the main square wave pulses, is the inductive kickback from the flyback transformer's primary winding. That is many times more voltage than you're putting in from your driver. This driver is inputting about 12 volts, 12 to 13. Uh, into the primary, and after it finishes its pulse, you're seeing a 90 volt kick. That 90 volts is what gives you the high voltage on the output. Since you have a much higher primary voltage, you get a much higher secondary voltage, instead of what you would normally get, which would be rather low power. So by using flyback topology instead of ZVS or half bridge or H bridge, you get a much higher voltage output simply because you're using the inductive kickback that would normally be just wasted or sent back to supply. Here you can see the actual circuit. From left to right you've got a simple 12 volt regulator, some decoupling caps, indicator LED, a uh, Schmidt trigger inverter just to square up the input. The red cap there is just a DC blocking cap that is taking the feedback from a feedback winding on top. Some more decoupling caps, a uh, TL494 gate drive chip, a little small 8-pin dip. And directly above that on top is an NTC thermistor to limit the inrush current so it doesn't make my power supply unhappy. A 10 ohm gate resistor just to uh, smooth things out a little bit. Some random MOSFET I have, um, I believe it's 100 volts, six, uh, 60 amps, uh, low RDS on, fairly fast. Uh, resonant frequency is about 72 kilohertz. There is a uh, Cornell Doublier um, series capacitor for a series resonant circuit with the primary. Primary coil is right there on the bottom. I forget how many turns, doesn't matter. It's a nice thing about self resonant designs, doesn't matter. Anyway. That's the circuit there. There's my old flyback. Again, on the bottom is primary. Above that is feedback winding. It's giving about 20 kilovolts. and it's running nice and cool with this heat sink. The uh, capacitor there allows it to lower the operating frequency from what would be natural for just the self-capacitance in that primary turn. Uh, I tested it without the capacitor and it runs somewhere around 300 kilohertz, which is pushing it for that little MOSFET and doesn't make the uh, flyback too happy either. And a lot more heat generation, a lot less output. So adding that in drops the resonant frequency gives you a higher output and less thermal waste. But the feedback coil simply comes in 
and goes through the DC blocking cap and then right into the input of the uh, inverted chip. It's only one lead, by the way. The second lead is simply soldered into an empty pad. Um, if you were to solder it to ground, it kind of pulls the whole thing to ground due to the low impedance of the uh, feedback winding, and you, you don't really get a good signal out of it. It's not looking for more than a couple microamps, so it'll get that just from capacitive coupling. Anyway, there you go. Flybacks explained. Small voltage in from your driver. Get a large inductive kick out when your driver is currently in the off. That's the off phase hump, which then gives you large output on your secondary. Hope that cleared things up and you enjoyed it.